How's it everyone? Grant here and welcome back to another video and as the title suggests we're going to be taking a look at Android 7.0 Nougat update for the Galaxy Note 5. So I know I'm a little bit late to this but I did notice that my version of the Note 5 which is the unlocked international version started getting the over there update for Android Nougat about two to three weeks ago. So I pulled out my Note 5, I fired it up and the update was there. So I installed it and have been playing around with it so I thought I'd share with you some of the standard Nougat features that have been added as well as some Samsung specific features that they managed to add to the 7.0 Nougat update. So let's just quickly get into it. If we turn on the device, we can go back into our settings here really quick and we'll go into software info and show you we are running Android 7.0 Nougat there as well as it comes with the March 1st, 2017 security patch and we can go into the Nougat Easter egg. So that's always fun. But really quickly, let's go into some of the Nougat specific features. So one of the features that I do like about Android Nougat, it's very small and subtle, but they do have bundle notifications. So if I swipe down from the notification shade here, I notice that all my applications are gonna have bundle notifications. If I pull down again, I've got two messages bundled together. So instead of having the notifications thrown all about and scattered throughout your notification shade, they're all bundled by application now. So that's a nice touch. I've gotten really used to that. It's a lot easier to find things, especially when you have a ton of different notifications. The other thing with Nougat is the ability for inline actions from your notifications. So messaging apps will have actions like reply. So if I hit reply, I can now do a quick reply straight from the notification shade without having to enter in to the app. Shout out to Jay Will there bombing my video. But I do like that. I do like the one on notifications. I do like the quick actions for quick rep replies from your notification shade in Android Nougat. Now, the other feature that I like, and I'm sure a lot of you like, especially on big devices like the Note devices, is the multi-window feature. And that is not new to Nougat. Samsung has always had that on their devices, but there's been some slight modifications to multi-window here, so I just thought I'd share. And for those of you who didn't know, you know, you can take a look at it here anyway. So with Samsung, you've got this two button, or this two, whatever you wanna call this icon, right? If you type that, it'll activate multi-window mode. No, standard Nougat won't have that, but it's a quick way to jump into multi-window. If I tap that, I've got one window at the top now, and if I want to check out my Twitter, I can put that at the bottom. So now I can watch my YouTube as well as watch my Twitter feed at the same time. I can resize the windows accordingly, and if I want to access my multi-window options, I can just tap the middle there, and I can swap the applications from top to bottom. I can put the selected application into this pop-out type of style window, that is resizable. I can also minimize that into this floating type of an icon that I can access whenever I want. Pop it open again, maximize or close out the application. So those are all custom multi-window features that Samsung has. They've had it on Marshmallow, it's not custom to Nougat. But really quickly, I'll put it back into multi-window mode here. I'll bring over my Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, which is running Marshmallow and We'll go ahead and activate multi-window on this. So select YouTube at the top, Twitter on the bottom. And if you notice previously with Samsung multi-window, you had the dot in the middle to access your options, your multi-window functions. So on Nougat, you just have this little line in the middle there. If you tap that, you can access those options. And if you notice, you're missing a couple of different options here. So previously, you used to have this option here, which you could copy and paste information or text from one window to the other, as well as the ability to immediately maximize from the split view. You don't have those two options here in the Nougat version for some reason. So just something to point out there. Otherwise, it all functions the same. Another Nougat feature that I liked is the ability to tap on the Recents button to go back to your, to your last application. So you can do that here. If I tap on my Recents button and I tap again, I can toggle back and forth between the last application. Stock, Android, and Nougat is a double tap to hop back and forth. But here, we have to tap and tap. So tap once to get to the Recents window. Tap again, and it'll take you back to the last used window or application. So that's another new good feature that I like here on the Galaxy Note 5. So outside of standard Nougat features, Samsung has updated its UI or former touchways to what they're calling Grace UX. And they've made some UI modifications as well as some additional features. Show them. I can show you some of them here real quick. So from the toggles and the quick settings, like we saw before, they're a little bit different now. So if I bring back in my Galaxy S7 Edge, we can kind of see what that looks like here. So the toggles on Marshmallow used to be a lot more bulkier, more rounded there, which is a lot more flat here on the Nougat version, a lot cleaner. If we go into our quick settings here, you'll also notice some of the differences there where you had your recent settings up here 
and a whole laundry list of settings there that's with the same kind of iconography, a little bit cartoony. They flatten that out again here in the Grace UX experience. Grace UX is also the same UX that they wrote, that they came out with on the Galaxy Note 7. Uh, it's been rolled out to the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, and it is now here on the NuGet version on the Galaxy Note 5. And so with that, we can go into some of the changes here to the quick toggles. So if you notice here in the quick toggles pull down, we've got something here where if we go into reorder buttons, support for third party sh quick shortcuts. So this offline mode is, if you notice, is a Spotify icon. So that is the Spotify offline mode quick action. So applications that support want to support this can, and you'll see them here as more and more support it. But for now, Spotify does. And if I hit done, that now shows up in my quick toggle, so I can quickly toggle into offline mode for Spotify without launching the application. So that's a nice addition there. Other things you can do now is button layout. So button layout changes the grid size, so if I wanna fit five by three, I can fit more quick toggles on the screen, given that this is a nice big display. I can fit more of my quick settings up into this quick toggles by changing the grid size there. Other new things here are also blue light filter. So this is your night mode, helps uh, with limiting eye strain if you're looking at your device in the dark or at night. So that's a pretty standard feature that a lot of manufacturers are putting in place. You've got that here on the Note 5 now. Other things like performance mode, so they've got additional performance settings to help with battery life. Performance mode is actually the opposite. It'll fully throttle up your device. So if you want to increase brightness to so, so get a brighter looking display, you want a you want to use the full resolution of the display and you want to pump it up to Quad HD, 1440p. So you want to really get the most out of your device, put it into high performance mode, and it'll crank up all these things and you'll have that full experience. But speaking of additional battery settings, if we go into the settings menu here and we go into your device maintenance, this is something new other manufacturers are putting in place as well. It just assesses your device's performance. Uh, around memory management, running background running applications, all that good stuff. Uh, if you notice your device is performing a little bit sluggish, I haven't really on the Note 5, it hasn't really been too much of an issue. But if you do, every once in a while you can just hit optimize now. It'll go in and it'll start closing out background processes that have been running for a while, try to free up some space and memory for you. So that's a good way to just kind of clean things out a bit. But that's there. Your battery manager is here now. Um, it does have new settings. so. Performance mode is this max here, so if I go to max, that's pretty much your performance mode where you're cranking everything all the way up and you're gonna take a hit on battery life most likely. If you have it in mid, this is kind of gonna back it off a little bit, so it'll decrease on the brightness, it'll put your resolution into 1080p instead of 1440p to help conserve on some of that battery life. If you look into display by default, once you do the NuGet update, it's gonna revert your screen resolution to 1080p, 1920 by 1080 probably to help conserve on some of the battery life because the Note 5 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and it's sealed in, non-replaceable. Up to the Note 4, you had that nice replaceable battery. This is probably the main complaint about the Note 5 is that it was a sealed in battery and while a lot prettier and aesthetically nicer, it's a smaller battery capacity and people were complaining about the battery life. So minimizing resolution by default is kind of a way to help with that battery life. If you want, you can always crank it back up to QHD. Uh, if you want to conserve on some of the battery life, you can put it down to 1080p or even 720p. Now in 1080p, I don't really think the display looks bad at all, I don't even notice it. But if you upgrade to NuGet, just keep that in mind. It's probably going to default you back to this 1080p. If you want to go back to Quad HD, this is where you can go ahead and change that. Outside of that, Grace UI also brings a little bit tweaks to the UI here. So icon frames, for example, I can turn off that frame behind the icon there. So Samsung has that square frame behind the icons. I can go back to icon only and, and hit that. And if we notice, it'll remove that border around those icons. So if you didn't like that, that's something that you can play with there. That's an option that Samsung is giving people to kind of scale back some of that UI elements. The other, th the other display option to note is that you do not, the update does not bring the always on display. So that's probably one of my biggest disappointments. I like Samsung's always on display now. Um, if we bring in here the Galaxy A7, you'll notice it has had support for always on display and this is a mid-range device. Uh, and I like Samsung's new implementation because you can see all the icons, even non-Samsung applications, will show up here. So all on display on the Note 5 has not been delivered here in the NuGet update. I'm not sure, maybe it's the screen technology, but I think they're all are super AMOLED displays, so I'm not sure what's going on or why that's specifically omitted. But that is one feature that I, I do miss from the Samsung uh, Grace UX and NuGet updates. All on display, not here on the Note 5. Other Grace UI, UI elements are things like 
transparent folders, so you've got transparent folders now. I'll quickly show you on the S7 Edge, you've got non-transparent folders. So, so something a little bit small. They're trying to streamline the UI and simplify it. That's another little touch they've done here. Another thing they've done with Grace UX is the ability to sleep applications. So if I long press on an icon, it'll pop up the contextual menu. And one of those options is sleep. So if I tap sleep, what it'll do, it'll tell you here, is it'll put it to sleep, meaning that it won't be using any battery in the background, but you will also not receive any notifications for that app. So if you want to conserve on a little bit of battery, or and you don't mind not getting notifications for a while from certain apps because you're very busy, like Twitter, Instagram, and you want to do it on an app-by-app -app basis, that is definitely one way you can do that. So that's a nice little touch they've added here in this update. Other UI elements that they've updated are some of their native app support. So if I go into apps, like their own calendar app here, it's a lot flatter, a lot nicer. I did not like the TouchWiz calendar app. I never used it. But here, if we kind of look at the streamlined calendar app, brings it more in line with their Grace UX design language. It's a lot nicer. I'm actually using this calendar now. I think it's a great update. One last thing around software updates here is that Samsung in device and maintenance, or actually, sorry, lock screen and security, they've gone and added Samsung Pass. So if you hit Samsung Pass, this basically allows you to use the biometric features like the fingerprint scanner to authenticate onto things like websites and whatnot. So, you know, if I scroll here, it even says, right, you can actually use your fingerprint sensor to, to associate to certain internet passwords and whatnot, but only the Samsung browser. So if you use Chrome or something, it's not gonna work, but it's a nice way to use it as a password manager. So you can just unlock or add add certain passwords with your fingerprint versus having to memorize them all. If you like that sort of thing and you use a default browser, that can be helpful. Just something to note there. And last but not least, probably my favorite feature of Nougat and the Note 7 specifically was the GIF maker. So if you want to share, create a GIF out of something, especially like a video, you see a video you like, you want to share it on social media and you want to add a GIF to kind of show people what it's kind of about instead of having to read a bunch of text. You know, GIFs are very big nowadays. You can go ahead and make your own. So you can just go into there, resize the window, hit record for whatever length you want. We'll do about five seconds there, we'll stop it. And you can go ahead and save the GIF, you can go and share it on social media, you can go ahead and even draw on it. Forgive me, I'm left-handed, I'm not right-handed, so this may not look very good. But you can go ahead and personalize it a little bit, save it, you know. And there's your little gift that, that you can share. So probably one of my favorite features of the Note 7 has, has come to the Note 5 and you can create GIFs with the S Pen. Who doesn't like a great GIF nowadays? So that's a very cool feature that they've added as a part of the Nougat update on the Galaxy Note 5. So those are some of the standard features that Nougat has brought to Note 5 as well as some customizations that Samsung has included in their own UI Grace UX on top of all that here in the Nougat update for the Galaxy Note 5. If there's any other features that I missed that you know of, let me know in the comment section. If there's anything else you want to know or have any other questions, also drop a comment below. Other than that, as always, thanks for watching.